I think of the people that are around him. Most of them are not considered scholars or whatever. Not that that matters one way or the other. But just, just what he, at that moment, he says, I will open my mouth. This is the Lord. I will open my mouth. I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. My God, folks. My God. That Jesus just all of a sudden just says, I'm going to tell you, because they're all thinking you're the Messiah, meaning you're somebody born that's raised up to help us, which is pretty much Christianity too. You know, you're born to help us. <clears throat> but he... He breathes out these words. He opens his mouth in parables and, and says, I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. And that's our, that's our foundation, our, our founding scripture for these times together. And I think I'm pretty accurate when I say this, that to the Holy Spirit, this time together in the Word uh, and uh, seeking Him has had nothing to do with this. It has to do with wisdom from before the foundation of the world. And it, you know, so it doesn't have anything to do with that or, in a sense, when you consider the Holy Spirit hovering on those words and bringing the light of that reality to us, um, which is more than what we think it is, I, I, I think, then it's not what even what we get out of it because everybody's probably going to get something different or this or that or you know it's not it's not it's about what he says. I mean, am I making sense? It's about what Jesus says pertaining to this, which is not about this room. And. You know, it's not about what you understand from it either. It's not. It's about what is. And will always be in his heart. And whether we understand it or not does not make his stature rise or fall. He is the I am. And so I know that we always, we measure, we measure a lot by ourselves, by what we get or whatever. But I think with the Holy Spirit, his concern that in relationship that we hear Jesus' voice, we hear his heart, we hear one who knows and was there at the foundation of the earth. Hallelujah. Amen. He wants to fly on the wings of that. Mm. That's, that's where his heart would be. <clears throat> but in relationship to us, as we've said, then it's the condition of our heart that the Holy Spirit would be. You know, that's where the Holy Spirit would be wanting us, in, and I'll say it in simplest terms, to be with Jesus where he's at. And right now where he's at is opening his mouth and telling us wisdom from 
we never would have known or thought of. Hmm. The condition of our heart to not the not the condition of our heart when we walked in. Maybe the underlying condition, the general, you know, like a thermostat or a thermometer, it'll, depending on the weather, it's different places. Sometimes we're up here and sometimes we're down here. But he's, he's trying to find the general place and then bring us to a place that we probably have not understood before. Mm -hmm. And certainly when he's speaking to those folks at that original time, they, they hadn't heard it before. <clears throat> so, uh, when I was looking at the words again, I will utter what has been hidden since the foundation of the world. I wrote, this wisdom was not about how they should live on the earth. This wisdom that he's saying, he's talking it's not about how you should live on the So if you're working at it to practice, you know, make it practical in your earth life instead of in his heart toward him in his, as it is in his heart, as it is in heaven. He's higher than the heavens. And, and going there, well, uh, I wrote, this wisdom was not about how they should live on this earth. It's not the wisdom of this world, but it is wisdom before the world, not based on wisdom that pertains to our life and circumstances. It couldn't be. I mean, it, 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 it couldn't be. It can only be brought to us as our hearts are, are in a certain place that are not grabby or I need this or, or oh, I want, to get, I want to become deep and spiritual or I, 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 I. There's the fall of Satan right there. I, 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 over and over. Because this wisdom will drop the eyes. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that little phrase then, because that's perfect. It'll drop the eyes. Hallelujah. So, um, so I'm going to read a more fuller part here. Matthew 13, 33, and this is Jesus still speaking about parables. Another parable spake he unto them. The kingdom of heaven is like, and you know, I, I'm going to go on, I'm going to finish that verse. But the whole, the whole reality of this is what the kingdom of heaven is like, if you will. Not what we're like. Not what the kingdom of earth is like. Not the kingdom of Randy. It has to go further than us, it has to. We can't be, surely we can't stay the center focus of a religion that is not a religion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A religion that is not a religion. It's a person. So another parable spake he unto them, and, and, and you'd be surprised how many he has spoken unto them. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leaven. Okay, so here's the beauty of this parable. It's not about figuring this out. No, no, listen to me. It's not about figuring out what I just read. That's, 
the 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 word leaven or bread weren't wisdom world from before the world began. There's something more. There's something more, and that something more, the Spirit of God, He was right there in the beginning, and He's moving on this thing to get it all formed up. So it's not about this parable, leaven, and a woman took it and hidden three measures till the whole was leaven, and now you're going to know how the world began. No, that's not, I've never, that has not been my goal, is to explain something that only the Spirit of God can explain. <laughs> but that the Spirit of God might on yes. the words and as we gather, if nothing else, and how great this would be to be able to open all of us up to something maybe we, we still haven't heard yet. Mm -hmm. And to believe that there is that which He is so ready to bring us to. So it's not about figuring out the woman, the leaven, the hid three measures, the meal, till it's all leaven. It's about this. I will open my mouth in parables and utter things which have been kept secret from the world, from the foundation of the world. I hope you see the difference that I'm saying. It's It's... He's using words that they're familiar with in our life. But we make it about our life. And he's, he's trying to get to us. He's trying to reach us, but not with the facts of leaven. But wisdom that was there from the foundation of the world. Verse 36 says, Then Jesus sent the multitude away. I, I love this. He's, okay, listen to this. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Then Jesus sent the multitude away. <laughs> is, is that good or what? Anybody get it? Yes. He's not going to sit there and explain it. That's right. He'll, he'll get to the point where he'll say, I have to go away. I have to go away. I have to. I must go away. That the Holy Spirit can come and tell you about me so that you'll really know me instead of what you see and hear and taste and touch and smell. From the foundation of the world. And then it goes, he, it, it, it gets even better here in the sin. Then Jesus sent away the multitudes. I mean, Maybe I should have done that from the first thing. Just walk in here, read that, and then just send you away. He sent away the multitudes and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him. Ooh, a step. A step, yes. maybe? Yes. A step in the right direction? They hear something, and he just says, okay, y'all go, go, go. Well, what does all this mean, Jesus? He goes into the house and the disciples come unto him, saying, Declare unto the, us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered the next verse, the first couple of words. He answered. Just go and ask him. Just go and ask him. I mean, have we done that? Have we just said, I want to ask you, is it possible that everything that I've spoken since we've been doing this has really been worthless? Only meant to send you to him to ask him. 
They're saying, then why did I spend this much money coming to this place? <laughs> well, that's, I don't know, ask him. Yes, that's right. <laughs> so what it, what it is about then is it's about assuming you don't know everything <laughs> or that I don't know everything. <clears throat> Therefore, you come, you come to, you humbly come to him, and you ask, Lord, I don't really know this, and I'm trying to put sticks together to build something, but I don't really know this. Teach me the, the eternal mind. Through these parables. So, uh, if you have your Bible in Mark chapter 4, verse 10, I want to talk a little more about this asking thing because um, uh, I, I think, I think we, I'm going to say something weird here, and y'all are used to me saying something weird, right? I think. That we pray too much. I think we need to just do more asking. You see the difference? Prayers like this. Oh God, oh, give me someone to help me with it. Da, 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 da. And asking is, Father, what's going on in your heart? How do you see things? It's like a son coming to a father. It's not complicated. I talk to him all the time, and I'm sure many of you do too, but I talk to him all the time, and I talk to him like that. Rarely do I go like this when I'm driving down the road. <laughs> and the whole world said, amen, thank God. Steve um, can. So uh, Mark 4, starting with verse 10, and when he was alone... They that were about him with the twelve asked of him the parable. Verse 11, and he said unto them, unto you it is given. He's not saying I'll give it to you. He says unto you it is given. He made the man and he gave him dominion over everything and he gave it to him and, you know, and he didn't have any proof of it other than the the hearing of the voice of God saying, this is given. I didn't talk him into it. <laughs> I didn't pray him into it. I didn't, I didn't go do some sacrificial thing to get his attention. He just, he just gives. Oh, is that starting to be a key into his wisdom? So, unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. And I wrote in parentheses, but just because you heard a parable doesn't mean you know all the mysteries of his heart before time. <laughs> right? Yes. But it's given to us to know. Yes. I mean, that's a, that's a huge ground mm. on which to start. On which to be with him. Yeah. On which to trust him. Then that verse goes on, but unto them that are without. And I thought, without what? <laughs> to them that without, you know, they're not, you know. What is he saying? Unto them that are without. Well, I, when I asked that, then I went back and reread it. So I read it like this. But unto them that are without, unto them that are without all these things mm -hmm. done in the parables. Mm -hmm. But we, we can say, well, it's those that are outside and we're the in crowd. Well, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know how in we are. I don't know how in I am. I don't. 
I just want to love Jesus and not worry about what my position or my status or where I'm located in anything or, you know, or if I'm, if I'm a good minister or if I'm a bad minister or if I'm a successful minister or I'm the flop of the world, you know, you may not believe this about me, but I don't care. I really don't care. I mean, I'm not trying to win friends and influence enemies. <laughs> Amen. Um, I want his heart and I want it so bad that I weep and I cry out and, uh, and not because of some failure. That's right. But because I want his heart. Amen. And I want to know him from the inside instead of what I can see, feel, taste, Amen. and touch. Amen. So, but unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables that seeing they may see and not perceive. And hearing they may hear and not understand. And I, I wrote uh, after the word understand, you can have knowledge of something yet not understand it. Or have the wisdom of it. You can, you can know something and not understand it or have the wisdom of it. Amen. It's possible. Mm -hmm. Weren't we talking, was it here or some other class that I was talking about? Have um, the difference between having, oh, it was with the young folks. Yeah. The difference between knowing something and having something. You know, we know a lot of stuff and we think because we know it, we have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, we do, especially in the religious realm that we do. We, we, we know way more than what we have. And then when I, then the next thing I threw out at the kids is that, you know, not just knowing, do you know or do you have, but was, do you have or do you love? Yes. And it comes to a place where you don't have to have what you love. Mm -hmm. You just have to love. Amen. God is love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God is love, see. He doesn't have to have, mm -hmm. possess. Mm -hmm. He can just, they just flow. Mm -hmm. They just flow. They just Take care of one another. Um, so, uh, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be, be forgiven them. So, um, let's see, where is that? That seeing they may see, um, that, that seeing they may see and not perceive and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. And he said unto them, Know ye not this parable? And how then will you not know all parables? If you don't know this parable, you're not going to know any of them. I think it's kind of true of all the parables because they all are shooting in the same direction here. And if you get it here, then you can kind of get it over here. Uh, I wonder, and this is not a criticism or whatever, I, I wonder how many of us um, forgot all intentionally, yay, forgot everything that I was saying and just went to the parables and said, I want to see what this is all about. <laughs> You know, just say, I'm going to read them parables. Well, I'm glad you didn't because they'll scare the fool out of you. <laughs> I'll give you a few examples later. You know, but they will. Because they will. you don't need to be in or in the territory that you don't have any clue. You need to be, you need to have a heart and you need to have an a intercessor or a comforter to lead you into there. Yeah. 
which is the Holy Spirit. But when it said, uh, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven, I wrote down, what if there was a sin? What if there was a sin for making God's beloved son cry? What if there was a sin for making God, the Father's beloved Son, cry? And you never broke down and wept over it or asked for forgiveness over it. You only read the scripture and thought it applied to someone else, the Jews or somebody, and you remained able to read it many times without his wounded heart breaking your heart. And if you can do that, then you surely do not perceive the wisdom that was before time. It is is heartbreaking every time the Holy Spirit has to come to me and point out some area that of the scripture that is so dear or tender or is so um, like like the one where Jesus wept over Jerusalem and I just read over it I just read it you know and I don't you know somehow it doesn't apply to me it applies to Jerusalem it, it applies to the people that live there it applies to the Jews it applies to it always applies to somebody else except the good stuff that's why there's precious promise Bible <laughs> right <laughs> you know this applies to me and then there's the the pre- precious cursed Bible <laughs> and that one applies to all of them and I'm going to evangelize and pass out these cursed Bibles to them because they are, you know <coughs> no we we I mean, we're, we're laughing, but it's, it's deeply sorrowful that Jesus can stand there and weep and say, I would have gathered you as chicks underneath me, to me, to me, to me, not to Jerusalem, not to the religion of it, to me, but you wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. And, and even if we had it set in us that we're not going <clears> to <throat> do it, we're not going to be gathered, could we walk by and see the tears and at least, you know, I mean, one of the things that we can do is weep with him. Mm-hmm. There's no wisdom we need to give to him right. that will comfort him. We just need to weep with him. Yeah. Like I said, what if there's a sin of making God's son, his beloved son, the son of his love, weep. And God's saying in his heart, the father's saying in his heart, this is worse to me than doing that silly little sin over there that you're so worried about, but not worried about his heart. Verse 12 says that seeing they may see and not perceive. That's interesting word, wording. And not perceive. In other words, they're seeing. but So they have to be seeing something. They're seeing what they see in it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But they're not perceiving what he means in it. Hmm. Well, that's not, that's not just being theologically unsound. That's breaking Jesus' heart. <coughs> Who can do justice to such a thing? in words. I can't. I can't. (coughs) 
um, this portion here about um, seeing and hearing when Jesus said that in verse 12, you know, you, seeing you see not and hearing you, you know, you don't understand, you don't hear. And I followed that over. I, it's still in Mark 4, but it was uh, over to verse 26. It's, a, it's the same thing. Uh, he's just taking it up over in the latter verses now. Now, this is going to be an interesting one. He said, so the kingdom of God, so is the kingdom of God as if a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring up and grow. He knoweth not how. Get ready for verse 28 because we studied it already. For the earth bringeth forth fruit of herself. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Yes. In Genesis, yes. the creation story. See, it's not over with yet. It's still ongoing. Okay? First the, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. Okay, so he's not trying to make us farmers here. He's not. And he's not trying to, um, uh, and I'll show you the context in just a minute, but he's not trying to, um, uh, at this stage with what he's bringing up, he's not trying to get us to focus on the seed going into the ground as much as something else. And, and I'm going to show you a tricky little thing that he does here, okay? And, you, you know, you just got to stay with the Holy Spirit because he's, his mind goes places ours wouldn't go. He's amazing. So I, I want you to focus again on verse 28, but the, the part there is the little progression. That first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. Notice the word ear was used twice. Okay. So I wrote, notice, the verses prior to this speak of the ear and hearing. Mm -hmm. This was spoken after the following words were spoken. In other words, I, I'm going to read to you the verses that went before this. When he's bringing up the ear of corn, but he's using it as an example of hearing. Okay, so these are the verses just before what I just read to you. This is verse 23 through 25. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. And he said unto them, Take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall also be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, to him shall be given. And he that hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that which he hath. And then he starts talking about. So it's kind of, it's almost ridiculous that he's using the blade of, of, of not the blade, but the, the ear of the corn coming up and using that as part of the progression spiritually that we need to quit being those who hear, but don't really hear what he's saying. We hear what religion has said or our perception. Have you ever done that? Have you ever shared with anybody? And then while you're sharing, you're just, you know, it's clearly you've gone off on what you think it is. Uh, I think that's easy to do, particularly in the scope of the sharing we've been doing, because... I haven't tried to give any answers. Have you ever noticed that through this time? I, I haven't been trying to give you answers at all. I haven't tried to, I have barely, just this last class was the first time I even mentioned a few things where you could go, oh, you know. And if you were doing it in the first class, then the oh was probably your perception, mm -hmm. you know, because the Spirit of God's taking it way out. Amen. 
You know, way out. Have you ever had a fish, Robert, catch on your line and he takes off and runs and he's just going and, you, you know, you have to let him go for a little while and then you, you know, well, I think the Lord's trying to jerk us yes, back. Yes, yes. To where he's at, where That's he right. wants us at. Hallelujah. First, you know, the blade, mm -hmm. then the ear, mm -hmm. and then the full thing starts going. There you go. Okay. So, um, So I was meditating on um, some of the things that Michael Finnegan was sharing with us, and just beautiful, just wonderful. Um, uh, share, and, and what a great book to do it with, Revelation, because most people don't jump in and go, oh, I know what all that means, you know, a great book to do that with, because everybody else knows every other book. You cut me out, didn't you? <laughs> 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 but it was, a, it, it was great, you know, and uh, he was talking about it, this thing, um, he talked about the book of Revelation and how most of us read it, and we see all this scary stuff, uh, in there instead of seeing him which it does begin isn't it like one of the first verses something like what is it the, the revelation of Jesus Christ yeah. hmm. and then we go off on beast oh there's beasts in here <laughs> stuff like that and I want to know about the beasts you know uh, <laughs> boy we are yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was, but it was really the, the, it was great because he was weaving in and out of those things and, and it was like uh, someone, could, someone could listen to him and say, well, you didn't bring up the scary parts. Well, he didn't see them because he's looking at Jesus. That's right. He's full of Jesus. That's right. You know, he didn't see them. And when the time comes, you're not supposed to be seeing it all either. You're supposed to be looking at Jesus. Amen. And you're supposed to be in love with Jesus. Anyway, he was talking about that. And so I jotted down a couple of verses because, uh, you know, he, he really spelled it out, you know, of, of the focus being on the Lord and, and loving him and his love back. You know, there's this flow that's going on. And so I wanted to just read a few verses out of Revelation that will encourage you, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, Revelation 12, 17 says, And the dragon was wrath, wroth with the woman, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keepeth the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus. And Revelation 13, 4, And they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with the beast? And Revelation 13, 6, And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given over uh, him over all kindreds and tongues and nations and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man hath an ear to hear... Here. Let him hear. Those are some of the most, I'm sorry, folks, those are some of the most victorious scriptures Hallelujah. in the book of Revelation. Amen. Just, oh, just incredible. And in what way? In what way? Uh, I'm not getting the victory. I'm not, you know, how is this, you know, if I apply that to me, well, I'm scared. Well, quit applying it to you. Amen. <laughs> no, seriously, quit applying it to you. It applies to him, and in this case, his life in you. And trust me, whether you can see it or not, or tell on any front what I read, that that was good stuff. That was, I'm going to say it like this, that was good stuff to God. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. That was good step Amen. to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. It was maturity. 
Yeah. In a beautiful way. In a, in, in a, you know, first the blade, then the ear, and then, because that, that was what he ended with. Yeah. If any man have an ear to hear, let him hear. <laughs> See, this isn't a coincidence that these right. things flow together. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, I wrote, but when Michael finished, you, you felt, now this is important. When Michael finished, you felt love and peace and comfort, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Didn't you? Okay. But you only heard his words and accepted it. Maybe out of relief. But you never saw what he saw. That's right. Thank you. That's why she's my wife. You did didn't oh see, oh, you heard what he said, but there's something that comes after the ear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that changed his life and it changed his viewing and it changed it, certainly the view of the book of Revelation, but if it can change your view in the book of Revelation, it can change your view in any book of the Bible. Hallelujah. There's a big difference, folks. I, I, I was here in the room, too. And I felt your peace, and I felt your release and your mm -hmm. comfort that came, and I felt the love of the moment as it was being shared. But, folks, I bet you anything, if you yeah. haven't seen that already, in two weeks' time, you can get put in a situation that had dragons and stuff like this, and you'd be scared to death. Because you haven't seen that. Having seen, they perceive not. Having heard, see. There's, so, so I'm saying that by reason of uh, the fact of what we're trying to study here is not about having heard anything in this gathering here. It's time to get it. Well, I'm going to reread that again because I remember the moment when Michael shared and finished, and it was truth. And it, but it was more than truth; it was life, and it and it it bore witness to the wisdom that is before time. And it I couldn't have asked for a better partner Amen. to Amen. come in and share. That's right. Um, so I put, but when Michael finished, you felt love and peace and comfort, but you only heard his words and accepted them. Maybe out of relief, put that in parenthesis, but you never saw what he saw. I don't, I'm, honestly, I don't know how to break down past that. I'm just going to have to leave it at that. I don't know how to, to convince you that you and I individually, we must have a heart that wants him in such a manner that these things are shown to us and they're not, they don't fall on, you know, on the ground, like it said of, of uh, who was it, uh, uh, Samuel's words? Mm -hmm. Was it? Yeah. And his words didn't fall to the ground. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Praise mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, found a home. Um, so I wrote, uh, and the reason, one reason why I quoted these scriptures was, I tried to pick ones that I knew in the book of Revelation are just glorious, but they sound horrible. They're just glorious to God, but they sound horrible to us if we haven't heard or seen, get past the hearing and see, seen it. So uh, I wrote the parables can be just as bad as the book of Revelation. They can. 
I think because you stayed away from them, maybe, you don't realize these things are scary. They are. They're, they're parables. I'll give you a few here in a minute, and you can enjoy them. Okay. But uh, you can read the parables and see nothing except things that scare you. But they are about, and this is the truth, they are about love, and even the worst of the parables drip with the fragrance of God. Ooh. And yet, I'm telling you, right. I'm, te I'm just telling you, I don't think you're prepared for this. They're, they're tough, but they're not. That's just how we see. That's what we see, just like what Michael did. We, we see all the scary things, and then he brought out, oh, oh, you know. But we need to be faced with these kind of things because, because maybe where we're at right at this very moment isn't sufficient to God's heart. Amen. Yes, that's right. Not because he hates you, because, but because right. he loves you. Hallelujah. Yes. You know? Amen. All right. So, uh, let's try one. You ready? Yes. And I, you know, I have a lot more than this, and I mean, I could really scare this whole lot. We could skip dinner. Yeah. Yeah, well, you'll this skip a lot of dinner. dinners if we get into some of these. <laughs> Don't go too far, Danny. <laughs> That's right. You are right, brother. Okay, this is um, this is in the middle of Matthew 25. Matthew 25 is some of my has become my personal dwelling place in the Lord for a while, and uh, you might read it and go, "Why?" <laughs> All right, so uh, for the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So that's how many talents altogether? Ten. 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 We have math geniuses here. I couldn't figure that out. <laughs> I wasn't good at math. I was good at playing on the play yard. Okay, verse uh, 18, I think. Um, no, not yet. Um, uh, verse 17, and likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two. So he had how many? Four. Four. Yes. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. Verse 19, after a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. Now remember, these guys are just servants at this point. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Okay, people are always talking about being rulers and, you know, that we're going to rule and reign with Christ, right? Okay, or, or we're going to have dominion over the earth. I can see Adam going, we're going to, you know, it's always this spirit. It's always that thing that it wants to exalt itself instead of his spirit. So, um, uh, where was the second one, second guy, if I behold, I, okay, verse 21, I think. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. And uh, here's where I left off. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Okay. Um, verse 22. <clears throat> he also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, 
Thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things, and I will give thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of the Lord. Um, and I know that people, and most of the way I've, ways I've heard this interpreted is that, you know, if you're faithful with a certain ministry, God's going to give you a bigger ministry. Um, that's not what's going on here. <laughs> that's not what's going on here. Okay, so let us move on here. Verse 24. Then he that received the one talent came and said, Lord, now listen carefully to these words. I knew thee. Okay, so this is someone who knows the Lord. Yeah. I, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strong. And I was afraid and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that which is thine, which is yours, over there in the earth. Sounds kind of rough. Okay. Verse 26. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant. Now listen to these words. Thou knewest that I reap where I sow not, and gather where I have not strong. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, give it unto him which hath ten, for unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. And from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. He cast the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. All right. I, again, I am not going to explain this to you. I can. Uh, and I can tell you that it's based on the wisdom. This is a parable. It's based on what Jesus said. I can, I can promise you this. First of all, I shouldn't have to promise you that Jesus is right. <laughs> but I can promise you that this is exactly in line with it. And some others that you would never, ever, ever, ever think. Um, but I'm going to give you, let's see, a portion... sure I didn't jump too far here. Okay, Matthew 8, verse 11 through 12, and we're getting very close to being there. Uh, 11 through 12. Now there's a whole story going before this, and it has some similarities to the others. Um, uh, but I didn't want to drag you through the whole thing at this point. And you, I'm telling you, you can look it up later. Uh, this is Matthew 11, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew 8, verse 11 and 12. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, verse 12. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Shall I read it again? <laughs> Did it actually say that the children of the kingdom of heaven that they're gonna that they're they're gonna be cast out into outer darkness and apparently not know it until it happens and there's gonna be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Yeah. Did it say that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Should we believe that? Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, I'm not gonna explain it, and I can tell you that there are many, many parables 
that are just scary. And yet, like Michael shared about the book of Revelation, and yet, the, at the point that we think it's the scariest, it's there's actually the wisdom of God yeah. Amen. from before the foundation of the world. There is. There is. Yeah. But we'll never, ever, ever, ever see it by trying to take words and, you know, look them up and try to match this and do that or whatever because it's not, it's, it's a wisdom that laid this out. It's not meant to, uh, the stories are not meant to declare that wisdom, but to show it. I don't know how to, how to say it. To show this, this whole parable and the one I did before is totally directed by the wisdom of God. Totally. But if we're trying to find out how a lump of leaven did something here or there, and then know that it talked about it over here, so let's try to match those up. I'm telling you, you're not going to see, because your heart's in the wrong place. It's not in a bad place. It's just in the wrong place. It's not in a bad place, but you'll never see the wisdom of God because you're not looking for it. You're looking for answers and what these words mean and I don't know you know I don't know how God the Father and God the Son and God the Spirit communicate I don't know if they have telepathy I know too many space movies but but whatever it is they understand one another they understand that and they never have to guess at the meaning of their movements. They never have to guess. They don't. <laughs> they don't. So once you're in it, like they are, you don't need stories. But a story, how can a story bring you in to something eternal before the world? It can't. Only the Holy Spirit. And then he'll take it. He'll take it. And he'll open it. That's why I haven't tried to explain anything. Because it's ridiculous. Say, well, this is the most ridiculous time together in the Word I've ever been in. <laughs> it's been useless. It's been well, wonderful. So that's pretty much how my times are when I preach. They're useless. All right. So um, I wrote down, check out other parables. So, now hearkening back some, there's, you know, there's something more important than naming animals <laughs> or going to church <laughs> instead of being the church or, or praying to the unknown God. You know? Um, I think Paul called it uh, ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the mm. truth. Is it possible? Oh. Well, what would we ever be learning? Well, we wouldn't be learning him. We'd be learning the Bible. The Bible can keep you busy your whole life. <coughs> and you still might not learn anything. That's right. It's, it's the truth. Not anything that counts. Again, when Adam was naming animals... I'm sure he's thinking, uh, you mentioned something about a counterpart, mm -hmm. something where there could be give and take. <laughs> I'm, I'm, okay, that's a giraffe. When are we going to do that other thing? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, then where should the emphasis lie? Well, as hard as it is to get away from it, it's not about us. It's not about us. It will affect us, but it's not about us. If we don't know the difference, 
then we're pursuing something for us. But if we know the difference, then it can affect us without being about us. Although we, we are benefactors, no question about it. But it's about him. And when it comes to them, it's about them as the order of however they choose to move. If it's going to be the Father to speak and say, this is my beloved Son, or the Holy Spirit to come down and, and signify this is his beloved Son, and the Son just stand there and be glorified by them, he'll turn around and he'll say, I've come to glorify the Father, and the Spirit will say, I came to glorify Jesus. And, you know, I mean, there's only three of them. It's not that hard to figure out if you just, just get in the Word and start noticing them. And, the, and they're there, you know. And then, um, and then I guess I, my statement was, then where should be the emphasis? Not quite finished with this statement, that, but this is also in Mark. Mark uh, 12, verse 33. So where then should be the emphasis? Mark 12, verse 33. And to love him. And that's the actual King James. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the soul, with all the strength. And to love his neighbor as himself is more than all. More than all, more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices ever offered up. Not just more than the ones you've offered up. More than all of them that have ever been offered up. If you can take this verse back to the beginning and watch it grow in the heart of God and then flow down to Adam and then to Eve and see that that's, God's doing his part. He's setting it up for that. Well, then there is the devil who will never, ever make it about anybody else but himself. I will be like the Most High God. I will exalt myself. I will have dominion. I will do this. And you'll find a lot of the parables bring him in because he's the picture of exactly what God is not like. That's why it brings it in. It's not just the, the scary devil will get us or he's going to send us to hell or anything like that. No, no, no. It's much greater than that. If it's in the parables, it's an eternal wisdom in contrast. And then finally... Um, Here's the whole, the whole founding scripture together now. <clears throat> All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables, and without a parable spake he not unto them, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables, I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto... I know, I jumped rails there for a second. The kingdom of heaven is likened unto... The, what is the kingdom of heaven likened unto then? Hmm. Well, seek ye first the kingdom, this kingdom... <coughs> And all these things shall be added unto you. Wow. Is that enough? I'll give you all of it. You'll, be, you'll have dominion. But you'll have the right spirit with that dominion. Oh. Is that worth it? Amen. <laughs> yes, amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I, uh, you know, we all fail for words, and that is a good thing, Lord. Yes, it is. <laughs> There's just something about the way 
the way you've opened yourself and gathered us in. I like Jerusalem, your longings for Jerusalem, your Jerusalem, your Jerusalem, Lord. And you've gathered. You're not trying to teach us, you're not trying, trying to bring us into that which was before the foundation of the world. We can really be yours. And uh, to not know, to just love you, the real you, the you, you, all my heart and soul and strength and mind and forget the rest, just you. Even more beautiful than we could dream. The garden of you is our eternal abode. Oh, and oh, law. We long after you for you. Yes, With depths we don't even know you put in us. Because yes. we're created in your image. Mm. Depths that flow the way that God had flows by the eternal spirit that have never yet been even touched in us. Thank you. <laughs> Lord, I, I just thank you for what has begun. Thank you that we can take that place of not having a clue and be so enfolded under your wings that it is glorious and that it is already given. So, Lord, I just pray now that, that your word would... would the way it's been received will be received, even as it has been sent, would honor your heart, would redound back in the spirit that would bless and minister you to you. Lord, it's not a work, it's just a heart condition. We cultivate in our own ground. Yes. Father, um, we just pray according to you, just your needs, just your tears. It's your beautiful heart. Thank you, thank you, Jesus. It's truly a thank you. Thank you. Thank you.